so we were working on this problem yesterday as we were leaving. So for those of you who are absent yesterday, make sure you check in with your classmates. Um, there are three graph papers um, sitting on the window underneath the math equals success go figure board uh, posters. So I mean, I'm going to look over those and just kind of catch up to what we missed. But we didn't get a chance to debrief this one, so I wanted to start here. So you ha should have something looking similar to this. Um, excuse me, x cubed is, so that's 8, and then 4 is 64, so it is similar to that for your graph. Um, it didn't do a great job, but that's what x cubed basically looks like. And then our graph turns out looks very much like a parabola. Now, we counted by a large number, and so it's important that we kind of think of that what's happening. So you were supposed to do a limit at some point of what's happening and we're plotting the numbers. It looks, looks very much like x squared when we were done. So the real question is what would happen with 53? So I just wanted to highlight what the answer was at 11 and 12, which did not fit on our graph. So if you had the numbers 11 and 12, you should have gotten for 11 a value of the limit um, at 12 of 363. So the limit as x approaches h, h is 0 of um, 11 plus h minus f of 11 plus h minus f of 11. So this is h. So h is an annoying function here, but we'll pretend for just a minute. Um, 11 over h. So I'm just going to go with um, capital H for my function name. Just so it's not the same as the letter h underneath. So that one's 363. And then the limit as h approaches 0 of capital H again of 12 plus h, lowercase, minus h of 12, or lowercase a, so h approaches 0, this limit, um, where, there's my, make my more writing space, is, um, 432, which was definitely not on my graph. I think my graph only went up to around 300 and something. So these two don't fit on the graph. So one, I wanted to reassure you that you didn't make any mistakes, um, that they are correct. So what's happening? Um, did, has anybody thought about it? What's happening to the graph? What will the answer be when x is 53? So it looks like a parabola, but it is definitely not just x squared because we know that 11, that 12 squared is 144 and we know that 11 squared is 121 and these are not those two numbers so what's happening so i want you to with your group discuss what the answer is here and i'm not going to tell you today i will tell you tomorrow um, and we'll see if you can come up with it on your own but what was the purpose of a slopes graph so why did we do all of this today yesterday and um, why am i finishing up with it today well we are actually the slope the graph of the slopes of a function at given points at any given point is actually, oops, sorry about my giant eraser. Let's go back and forth between the eraser sizes. Um, at any given point is, is the derivative of the function. So we're going to have a lot of different notation here. Whoa, that went crazy. Um, so sorry about that. So that's the idea is it gives us a picture of all our derivatives because the slope the derivative is just the slope of the graph at any point. So um, with that said, I'm going to add a few notes to the sidebars um, tomorrow of different things I want you to add. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, and I made it a little larger over here, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink this back down. Um, 
So that way you can see it. So go ahead and get this written down. Um, pause the video here. Uh, if you want me to stop talking, I'm going to keep talking about what you see, assuming that you've paused and taken the time to write. So we have a derivative is a, a derivative is a function f of f prime of x. So that little tick mark is called prime that gives the slope of the curve at any x value on the original function f of x. So I might even add the word original in here. The original function f of x. So the notation for derivative, these are not minus signs. I think they should be dots. Like these are different ways you can write the function. Y prime, F prime of X, these tend to be our favorites. They're much easier. Dy dx, df of X. Um, and sometimes this is df of, et, df of X, dx, um, d, d dx over of Y. So these are a little bit tricky stuff, um, but let me just kind of talk to you about it. There were two main creators of calculus. I've mentioned that before. One of them favored this notation. The other one favored this notation. This is Leibniz notation. And as it, since it was the created and it has lasted, these are actually come from other places. These two are the most critical and they're the most clunky. But dy dx means the derivative of y with respect to x. So let me say that again. Derivative derivative of x with respect okay let me start over derivative of y with respect to x meaning that x is the number that's changing change in y over change in x if you recall delta y and delta x so delta y and delta x and D, they just, that's the Greek letter for D, and they just became that. So that's basically what we have here. This is the other key point here is that um, a tangent line touches a curve at one point and sh shares the slope of that curve at that point because it only touches it once. This is really, really critical. You've got the equation of a tangent line, Y minus F of A equals f prime of a times x minus a. So I wrote that in our preferred point slope form, which is y equals our slope, f prime of a, um, and then x minus the x value plus the y value of the function. So just so you know, that's just point slope form in a different format. So again, pause me as long as you need to, and then listen to me ramble, um, and that make sure you get this all written down. Then we want to go ahead and check our understanding. So you have these five questions to check your understanding. Um, and I'm going to set up A for you because I would do that if I was present. We're going to go ahead and use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x. So if you recall the definition of the derivative, that's that limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And so in this case, that will be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So um, my function is 4x squared, so x is going to be x plus h quantity squared minus 5. So there's my function f of x plus h. See how the only difference is that middle. Minus 4x squared minus 5 all over h. So that's where you're going to start. You're going to do a lot of algebra, manipulate it, and um, then we'll talk in a minute. So I want you to go ahead and try that. I'd like you to try all of them. So I'm going to give the answers on another video because I feel like if I pause it now, you will just keep work. You'll just not pay it, do, try it on your own. Um, so E is basically they've set one up for you and haven't done any arithmetic. And they're asking you, what am I trying to find here? And so you have to kind of explain it. And it's a little tricky. Um, then this one, you need to find the slope first um, using our long method. And um, so 
actually we don't need to find it the long method just basic thing the other thing is this word normal so tangent is passes through normal is just another word for perpendicular and then see if you can draw the slope of this on the graph so i'm going to go ahead and pause the video i'm going to make a new one with all the answers in it so you don't need to pause just kidding the new answers will be up in a little bit see you in a minute 